Quick College Tips eBooks, Essential Internet Marketing. Introduction Starting an online business doesn't have to be particularly difficult, that's not to say that internet marketing success is easy, but providing you have some essential things in place, then it's possible to start making some money online pretty quickly. There are certain things however which stand between you and success. I end this report I'm going to teach you some of the things that every internet marketer should be doing. Heard people talking about the importance of list building but don't have a clue how to go about it? Want your own product but don't know how to create one? This report should help. Let's get started. Some essentials you'll need before you start there are certain things that every internet marketer needs before they can start building their business. The first thing you'll need is web hosting, a place to store your websites and files online. Now there are free hosting solutions out there, but I wouldn't really recommend them because they are often slow and place unwanted adverts onto your websites. You also have to place consideration on reliability. Many free sites are known to go down more often and result in lost customers. The good news however is that even paid hosting is extremely cheap. Simple hosting packages can be picked up for less than $10 a month and they'll probably give you most of the things you need. Look out for a hosting provider that uses cPanel. Don't worry too much about the technicalities of this, it's simply a control panel which makes installing things on your website as simple as clicking a few buttons. There are lots of different hosting providers out there and different people will recommend different solutions. HostGator is one of the most well-known and is popular amongst internet marketers. Another is GoDaddy. The next thing you'll need is a simple FTP program, such as FileZilla FTP sounds complicated, but it's just a simple program that allows you to upload web pages and files to your web space. Other essentials, a web page editor you'll need this to create and edit web pages and templates. A free HTML editor, such as Composer, will suffice. Or if you have Microsoft front page already installed on your computer, then that will be fine too. Autoresponder provider building a mailing list is a pretty important part of any online business. To build one you'll need something called an autoresponder. Essentially, this is a tool that collects people's email addresses, i.e. signups on your website, stores their details, and then allows you to send those people emails, both one-off emails and automated emails. Most autoresponders also allow you to collect statistics, e.g., the number of people who have opened one of your email messages. There are many autoresponder providers out there, but some of the most popular include Aweber, GetResponse, and Infusionsoft. IT doesn't really matter what you use. Each has advantages and drawbacks, so it's really up to you to do your research. I use Aweber, but that's just my personal preference. But whatever, you do need one if you want to build a list, and you really should, domain names any website requires a domain name e.g. .com or .co .uk. there are many people you can buy domain names from pretty cheaply, for example, Namecheap or GoDaddy Google Analytics it's also important to track your stats on your websites. The ability to see how many people land on your pages in a particular time period, together with other information, such as how they found you, how long they stay for, which world region they are visiting from etc. is all great information that can really help you to make better marketing decisions. Google Optimizer This is a free tool that allows you to test different versions of a web page against each other and improve your conversion rates. When you think about it, even a tiny increase in conversions can have a massive impact on the success of your business. Let's imagine you have an ebook for sale and the sales page converts at 6%. That is, on average, for every 100 people who visit your sales page, six of them will actually buy the product. Now imagine you create a different version of the sales page and want to test it against the original. You run it through Google Optimizer and you find that the new page converts at 8% rather than 6%. If your sales page received then 1,000 visitors you would make 20 extra sales compared to the original. If your ebook sold for $9, that would be an extra $180 generated in revenue for doing absolutely nothing more than creating a new version of the page and testing it against the original. Obviously you could create a page and find that the original converts better than the second version, but I hope that this demonstrates to you why testing is so important. Skip to chapter. Blogging look at pretty much any successful internet marketer and you'll find that they all use blogs to in my opinion a blog is. 
a pretty essential element of any online business, and the good news is that it's easy to start 1.no matter what niche you're operating in, a blog has many benefits. It can be used to demonstrate to your prospects that you know what you're talking about and they are great for promoting and linking to your own products and other related offers. The great thing about blogs is that they allow you to build a relationship with your prospects. If it's a good blog, i.e. one with decent content, then people will keep coming back to read what you have to say. Over time, they begin to feel like they know you and are therefore more likely to buy your products. If you have an email list, you can notify your list every time you make a new blog post which blogging option is best, there are a number of ways you can create a blog. You may have seen a service called Blogger, which is owned by Google and allows you to create a blog for free without having any web hosting. Whilst this is an option, it usually be better to use something called WordPress, also free, but requires you to install it onto your own web space. The problem with Blogger is that you never really own your blog. Blogger could come along one day and shut down your blog if they decide that it breaks their terms of service in some way. If this happens after you've been developing your blog for a year or two, you'll most likely lose all the work you've put into it. There are other reasons too why WordPress is generally considered as the better option. It is much more customizable and allows you to create a more professional-looking blog which fits better with the results you're trying to achieve. If you went with a hosting provider which uses cPanel, then installing WordPress into a folder on your web space can be done in just a few minutes, and they should provide on-screen instructions. That's why it might be best to go with a hosting provider that uses this. Customizing your blog there are a few things to do before you actually start blogging. First of all, You'll probably want to install a theme onto your blog in order to make it look the way you want. There are literally thousands of WordPress themes available. Some are free and some cost money, but even then they are generally available fairly cheaply. The great thing about WordPress themes is that you can make your blog look pretty much any way you want. There is a huge choice of different designs, colors, and layouts available. You can of course further customize your theme to get it looking exactly as you require. So, what should you look for in a blog theme? One of your first considerations should be the layout you require. A popular choice is a three-column layout, which can generally be arranged in any way you like. You might want the left and right-hand columns to display adverts and affiliate links, with your actual blog posts in the center column. Dot, or a different layout might work best for you. The best thing to do is go and look at various blogs and themes and then decide what you're looking for. Another key consideration when choosing a theme is the features it has and how customizable the theme is. Some have much greater scope to be changed than others, the more customizable, the better, and it's always worth checking what features the theme has, creating content for your blog. The content that's on your blog is ultimately the reason why people will visit it and it's what will keep them coming back. You can obviously write blog posts yourself or you could outsource them. The option you choose really depends on your time, skill, and what sort of blog it is. A personal blog with your name on it should really be written by yourself, but if it's a niche blog, it might be better to outsource IT.so. What sort of content should be on your blog? Well, a mix of pure content posts and content slash promotional posts normally work best. What do people in your niche want to know about? Why will they be coming to your blog? I always find that forums are an excellent source of blog post ideas. If you're ever stuck for blog post ideas, then visit an internet forum and I almost guarantee you'll come back with quite a few ideas. What questions are people asking? What problems do they have? What insights do they want to read about? The more alive you can make your blog feel, the better. By alive I mean that people want to enjoy reading your blog whilst at the same time being informed. Take a look at the most popular blogs and you will nearly always find that they take this approach. And how can you do that? I often find that personal anecdotes work best. If you can make what you are saying seem real by telling a story, then it makes the information in your posts carry a lot more weight. It also injects that crucial entertainment factor, especially if it involves some kind of disaster. Actually, that's a massive tip right there. People love to read about stuff that goes wrong. Nobody gets it right 100% of the time and people want to hear about this often because they can relate to failure and it makes you appear more genuine. Monetizing your blog. Visit my website to read the rest of this ebook.